hear it. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking forward to this. Um, what? Do you want to do a, a little shruti this morning, Dom? Oh, do you, do you, just do, wanna... you want to do it, Bob? You want me to do it? Yeah, you do it. Okay, how are you feeling? I'm all right. I'm yeah. doing well, I think, yeah. <clears throat> is it dark in your room, Don? It is. Should I put a light on? Maybe, because you look a bit grainy, because there's no light. Oh, I'll try something. Just get a bit of light on your face. Oh. That's definitely better. Yeah. It's a lot better, yeah. You're half lit. Looks good. <laughs> Mm. That's sort of morning, scary. morning, Miriam. Why am I hearing an echo? I me. Oh, ah, oh, that's it. A good bugger. <laughs> morning, morning, morning. Can we unmute everyone, Linz? Good afternoon, Morning, everybody. Hello. Hello. Morning. 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 Good evening. Morning. <laughs> morning, Pooh Bear. Morning. morning, Hal. Morning, Liz. Morning, Ines. Oh. Hello, I hope you're feeling good. Morning. Yes. I don't know if I'm on or off. You're on. We can hear you, Don. You can hear. Yeah. I don't know. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Does everybody know Martha? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Just from his gong talks. <laughs> Um, Don, can you can you get a little closer or turn on your volume a little bit because you're you're a little bit um, quiet. Uh, I'm quiet. You can't hear no. what I'm saying. Yeah, a little quiet. See if you can raise the volume or just get a little closer huh? to your computer. Raise the volume at all. Please, <laughs> Bob, can raise the volume. I'm up as high as I could go. Okay. Uh, maybe just. Project a little bit, Don. and I always have a hard time. Bob is always softer than everybody else. I don't that know is why. not true. <laughs> on my computer, you've got the Bob filter on your computer. <laughs> yeah, you see, I can barely hear you. Are you serious? Why is that? Can you hear everybody else? Yeah, say something, yell. Hello, hello. See, she's a little louder than than you are. I'm just yelling in my living room, so. She's yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to listen very carefully today, Don. That's, that's probably what it is. I my, um, my microphones. But it, it should be good, though. It's a... All right. I thought you'd just change characters. No, I, I could do my whispery voice if you want, my perfume commercial voice. <laughs> Calvin Klein. <laughs> the new perfume. Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> oh, there's a time when oh, the world was populated by gong players only. Don Conroe is gong man. <laughs> All right, not to break up the fun, but it's 6.32, so we get to get our party started here. Cool. Okay. Do, do we want to start with a, just a hello and then mute everybody? Yeah. BJ, are you okay? Can you, have you sorted your end? Can you hear everybody? No, BJ can't hear. Linz, could you just chat her through something? She's not. Yeah, maybe you can just send her a little private message so I can see she's not hearing anything. Oh, smile in the world. Smiles with Smile, you. Don. Hello. 
you know, my dad used to sing, me and my shadow. <laughs> okay. Liberace. Good morning, everybody. Liberace, me and my shadow. Good morning. Good afternoon. No, oh, yeah, it's afternoon there, isn't it? It's morning here. It's very early morning where Don is. Um, Lonely Gong is in, where are you there? Look, in the middle of beautiful <clears throat> environment. I love that backdrop. That's, uh, that's my video in the background playing. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. I love it. My computer can't do that. It's not powerful enough. Okay, numbers are going up. Okay, so, <clears throat> morning. 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 Um, Hello. Welcome to this week's uh, first Gong Talk with um, obviously Don and myself, and we've got the amazing, incredible Martha Collard with us. Hi, Martha. Oh. I'm good now. So no one heard any of that? No? Okay. Morning and welcome to this week's um, Gong Talk with Don, myself, all you guys, and the amazing Martha Collard, who... Hi, Martha. Just want to say hello to everybody. Hi. Uh, Martha's in Hong Kong at the moment. She'll tell you all about that. And you can see behind her, she's got her incredible gong, which makes her look like an angel because it's like <laughs> a big titanium halo behind her head. Um we should have put a bit of light on it, and then you would be pinging. No, I can't quite. I can't, can't quite do it. I actually have. It's it's ten. It's nine thirty at night in Hong Kong, oh. and uh, yeah, I can't really. The lighting in my studio. I've got every light in the the room on, uh, but you can't really see the colors properly. Oh. But you get the idea. I mean, if you want me great. to hit it, I can hit it. You know. Oh but, yeah, well, you've got to play it for us before we go at some point. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so um, Martha's come today especially to come and ex share her experience, strength and hope in her journey with the gong and sound and um, she's going to speak to us about Starhenge especially, which is a subject that I know is very close to both Martha and Don's heart. Um, and I know for many of you it's going to be a subject that um, you know, you've all wanted to dig a little deeper into but never had the opportunity because... Um, Usually when we do it on the course, it's not unfolded as deeply as we'd like it. So Martha's going to, and Don are going to give us a bit more information about that today. And you can um, obviously ask questions. So um, if you do have a question at any point, um, stick it in the question, the chat, or if you give me a little hand thing, um, what is it called when you kind of put your hand up, a reaction, and then we'll try and get round and get some questions out as well, Martha, uh, on this, Martha and Don and um, try and get some conversation moving on that. So, before we start, why don't we just do some beautiful ohms together, which is always a nice way to start, Don. Can you hear me? Yeah. Are you going to do the whole thing like maso maso? Oh, I've got something today for you special. Bob, you know, is an alien from Sirius. And he's not joking. He's very serious when he says that. So let's do three ohms together. Nice deep breath in. Inhale deep and om it out. Oh.
Okay. So, <clears throat> my great pleasure to introduce um, Martha Collard, who's going to share with us her experience around Starhenge and other marvels that she's encountered on her journey. Over to you, Martha. Great. Well, thank you, and Satnam. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. I did a little PowerPoint um, about the gardens today, uh, just to give you a little bit of a guided tour. But just uh, quickly, a show of hands. You can do it in your, on your screen. H how many people know what the, the gardens are, the Universal Peace Gardens are? Okie doke. Uh, thank you, Don. Thank you. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm glad you know what it is. How, how many people have actually uh, attended a workshop? Uh, okay, a lot of hands went down. And how many people have actually built one in nature? Okay, we've got a few people. Okay, awesome. So what we're going to do today is we're going to teach you everything you need to know to get really excited about these gardens and how you can, um, we're going to leave you with some ways that you can deepen your knowledge uh, sooner rather than later so we can fulfill Don's dream of encircling the world with these gardens so that we can connect ourselves energetically and harmonize and elevate humanity. Okay, so if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box. I'm going to share the screen, so I don't think I can see the chat box, but I think Bob, you'll stop me yeah. or somebody will stop me. Yeah, okay. So let's just dive in. Right, that didn't work. Um, okay, sorry people. Um, um, what happened? Did you click? Okay, screen? there we go. Should okay, so we have a number of different names for the gardens. Uh, Universal Peace Garden or Starhenge. Many of you know what Stonehenge is, and henges go back thousands of years. Some of them are over 6,000 BC in, in age. And basically, a henge is just simply a circle and usually made out of stones and used for ceremonies and for predicting. Martha, just yep. quickly, we can't, can, are, you, are you screen sharing because we can't see anything? Really? I yeah. am screen sharing. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's go back and say, how's that? Yay. Does that work? Wonderful. Oh, yeah, okay. Got it. There you go. Okay. Thank so, you. <clears throat> as you can, okay, so they go back to you know at least 6,000 years BC. And they're generally circles made of stones and they're used for ceremonies, for predicting equinoxes and things like that, usually associated with astrological uh, purposes, yeah? So people wonder how, how I got involved in all of this. And there's a little story behind it. Is it okay if I tell my story, Don? <laughs> <laughs> well, in 2014, I, I met Don in Slovenia. Um, my friend Jocelyn called me up and said, Martha, we're going to go to Slovenia and we're going to take a course with Don Conroe. And it's like, oh, yay. So there were four of us. There were two from Taiwan, Jocelyn from Shanghai, myself, and we traveled to Slovenia. And we honestly didn't know what the course was about. We just knew it was a level four training course with Don Conroe and uh, we made our way to Slovenia and lo and behold we were actually making a garden and our jobs were to go out and find rock. Uh, that was my first experience but at the end of that workshop we didn't actually finish the garden it, it rained a lot so the ground was very wet but at the end of the garden, Jocelyn said, Don, come to Shanghai. And I said, come to Hong Kong. So I came back to Hong Kong. I quit my job after 28 years in consulting, built a studio so that Don would have somewhere to play when he came to Hong Kong. And that was five years ago. So eight months later, I was in Shanghai assisting one of his workshops. And as Don does, at the beginning of each workshop, 
you have to do a self-evaluation, right? Has everybody done one of those? No, you don't do them anymore? Yeah, okay. Yep. And whoever gets the highest score has to teach that module, yes? Are you familiar with that rule? Anyway, so I had the highest score for the gardens because I was the only one who actually knew what it was because I had actually tried to build one. So I'm a, I'm a trainer, I'm a facilitator, I, 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 I need learning aids, right? And the only thing we had available was an A4 version of this, okay? Now, I don't know if you can see that, but it's really, really, really complicated and small. And you can't really teach 30 people in a room with a piece of A4. So somehow I scavenged four pieces of flip chart paper and I scotch taped them together. And we were staying in Jocelyn's house, so she had a very large foyer. And I spread this out and I had a piece of dental floss I had an eraser and I had a pencil and I had one of these and I made what's on the screen in front of you. And it was about two in the morning, I think it was, and this figure appeared behind me. <laughs> and Don's there, he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, what do you think I'm doing? I'm, it's your garden, you know? And uh, for me, it's very easy making circles because I also make labyrinths for walking meditation. So I, I, I drew it in pencil and the girls were very artistic and you can see the little filigree around the corners and things. And then we use this for the workshop. And this was on a, a Tuesday. That night, Dawn said, come to Croatia. And I'm like, when? And he said, Friday. And I'm like, that's like three days from now. And I'm like, Friday? And he said, yeah, yeah, come to, come to Croatia. <laughs> I just thought he was crazy. So I thought about it. And then I thought, no, no, no. He's my teacher. I got to do it. So I said, well, Don, I'll come. But I can't come on Friday. I can come on Sunday because I've got three events. And he said, OK. So I'm packing up to leave on Thursday night. And I've folded up my nice paper garden template and Don puts two hands on one side and I've got two hands on the other side and he says I want it and I'm like I know you want it but I, I know what you're going to do to it you're going to put it on a rock in the middle of the field and I don't want it ripped because I was going to get it copied in Hong Kong onto fabric and in the end we compromised I put it on the um, we hung it up I took a picture and by the time I got to Hong Kong the next morning, it was already printed on the fabric that you see in front of you. So when I arrived in Croatia, I presented Don with the fabric version and that became uh, his teaching aid for the next, what, two years, I guess. Yeah, it was well traveled with you. Uh, we found one or two mistakes, but that's okay. Not bad for a first go. And uh, that really, this is the first time that people have actually been able to see the garden in its uh, completeness, as well as uh, making it easier for Dawn to teach the workshop and, and all the correspondences and things. So this is how I got involved. And then um, Dawn came to Hong Kong. We rewrote his materials together. We turned it into a, a proper training module just about the garden so you don't have to actually build a garden to learn about them. And I also had uh, templates made that are, uh, you'll see one in a moment. And uh, so now each person who attends the workshops can have their own fabric template. So everyone around the world can have their own gardens. You don't actually have to build them in nature anymore. Yeah. Incredible. So how, how did these come about? I don't know. Don, do you want to talk about how you started making these? or? No, you go ahead. You go ahead. Yeah, please. it's okay. This is my test. I can tell. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I got gotcha. you. So in 1984, Don met Robert Mueller. 
And uh, I believe it was this salt march across the US, if I'm not mistaken. And Robert Mueller was repeating a, a prophecy that's been around for a while. And that was simply that world peace will be declared in 2025. And at that time, people of the world will come together holding hands, chanting Om. And so that's- He didn't, didn't actually though, he didn't predict 2025. Oh, oh. I'm, very, okay. I'm not even sure he knew about 2025. Okay. Uh, so so where does 2025 good. come from then? Well, that comes from LSJ Bailey okay. uh, and, and Madame Blavatsky, I think. Uh, th that date came through the seven ray people, the masters of the seven rays. And the fact that uh, there's usually a master or an overseer, angel, whatever you want to call it, on the other side, looking out over this energy ray, one through seven. And four, which is the green ray, and also they call it the white ray, is in the center of the rainbow. That ray has been used for warfare rather than of working together. So that was the big change. All of a sudden, there'll be no more war in 2025, and the fourth ray will be repolarized into working together uh, for the sake of our children. So that was how that fit in there. Ah, okay. Well, we're working, we're trying to work towards that date to bring this prophecy to light by actually providing people with circular spaces so that they can come together. And if you look at the earth or the, the globe down below, these are ley lines that are naturally occurring around the world. And what we're doing is we're adding ley lines and energetically connecting all the gardens, all the gongs, and all of us. Yeah. So this garden, you know, I'm sure most people have, are familiar with the geometer, um, which is an overlay of different astrological symbols and as well as other correspondences. So basically the garden is a version of, of that, but it doesn't move, obviously. So we use the gardens for a variety of reasons, largely divination as well as a world map. And it's also a place to gather, uh, to celebrate. And it's about connecting ourselves through vibration and, and through love. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. That's such a beautiful thing, the, all these links. Do you think that we have gong players in all of those spots now in the world? Uh, the middle of Hudson Bay, maybe not. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't know. I, I haven't been up north lately, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think we're covering most of the the dots for sure. I'm sorry, I interrupted. What about, what about the audience? You know. Well, I think we have a lot of people there that are those uh, spots of light on that that map. They're already. It doesn't turn, so you can only see USA. But uh, uh, I think that a lot of people who are listening could like stick a pin in one of those dots and say, "There I am." Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe we should do that. We should have Google Earth, and we can start connecting the gardens and start putting pins on it or something, yeah. and then we can create our own globe. Yeah. Now those aren't actually gardens. No, these aren't gardens. These are actually ley lines. So ley lines are usually naturally occurring and they, um, like for instance, the, the seven earth chakras, they would, be, uh, they would be representative of those points. So you might see Mount Shasta, something like a, a, natural, a naturally occurring, uh, mm -hmm something like a mountain, uh, it could be a, a river, a mountain, it could be pyramids, um, you know, but they, 
tend to be significant for the energy that is concentrated there and then, then networked and interwoven around the earth. Yeah. It's sort of like going, well, if we're, we're making man-made ones, so it's like walking up to the top of Glastonbury Tor and looking out in, it, in certain directions and you'll see church steeples as far as the eye can see in particular lines. And those are man-made ley lines sitting on top of naturally occurring ones. Yeah? In the ancient days, of course, the American Indians would use smoke signals and they would uh, deliver their languages and their talking between uh, smoke signals across the land. So we're yeah. just upgrading a little bit. Yeah, very similar, very similar. Uh, right, here we go. So what are they? This is actually um, the one in Croatia that we worked on in Pula and uh, so as you can see, there's rings, large rings, and then we have these larger uh, rocks. And right in front of, well, dead center is one of the gates. And the gardens have a particular structure to them. And I'm gonna walk you through ring by ring what, those stru what that structure is, okay? Oh. Now, where we locate the garden is of significance. So if you imagine the, the earth on the left and imagine the North Pole and then just tip the North Pole to wherever you are and you will see the center, which is your geographical location with rings of latitude or distance emanating from the center. And what we can do is this is how we use the garden as a world map. And I'm not going to go into details, but that's um, how we get the basic structure and the basic um, positioning. So the gardens are always aligned with true north so that the east-west vector will be appropriate and accurate for the solstices. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you know what they, uh, they say is that a little child is always the center of the universe. So the garden was really meant for children, uh, the child, I guess, and all of us. Uh, and that, so we set the latitude and the longitude with our, you know, satellites up there. Uh, so that we know exactly where every city is in the world. And the ancients would call it a straight track, where you would walk from here to there, you would cross through different areas. And this would be what we call in yoga, the pranic transmission, or we would send out that beam along that line. And this was the idea of the garden. So you would know where to send your prayers or your gongings anywhere in the world because the whole world was inside the garden. Right. And uh, can, can you see my pointer? Can you no. see my cursor? Okay. So if this is the center, then these would be considered the straight tracks. Okay. Yeah. So you start at the center and you just draw a straight line to the edge, which is called the wall of the world. And unfortunately, this picture zero is due south. Just turn it around. Just imagine it the other way around. But so this would be true north up here and east would be over here, south, etc. So as if we use this as a world map, let's say we're pretending this is Hong Kong, then, you know, due north about here would be Beijing. All right. Um, if just I went so all the way know, over uh, here, this would be New York. Just, mm -hmm. just so you know, we can't see your cursor. Or I can't. Anyway. Oh, okay. All right. So basically if if you know any any city that's geographically located due north of me would be on the line going straight up to zero degrees and likewise if this was hong kong and i wanted to plot new york i would go as far as i could either east or west 
because it's almost equidistant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when we plot the cities on or locations, we plot all the gardens in the world on the garden that we're making. We plot all the locations of the people that are building the garden. We include that. So what we're doing is we're energetically connecting and making ley lines between this garden and the existing gardens and other locations so that we're, we're building the ley lines. Yeah. And remember, intention is, what is it, like 90% of the impact. So it's seven o'clock. That's okay, don't worry, it's Don's computer. Well, I think okay. I stop okay. So we start with the dot, okay? You can't start a circle without the center point, all right? And then we build the first circle. Whoops, it's doing it automatically. Oops. Okay, so we have the the directions now the the template i'm showing you is the complete template so obviously we don't have summer spring winter and fall uh, in on rocks in the garden we have the directions but you can also see on this very small you can see the elements as well okay Martha, and what are we looking at right now which picture uh we're looking at each ring of the garden okay. starting okay. with the center point because if i showed hold on hold on let me just hold on just bear with me here that is what we make now if i showed you that off the bat you're probably going to get confused yes right just okay. head up or head down. <laughs> I think my, my zoom's gone a bit crazy okay okay but does everybody see this template it's quite complicated. It's got 11 rings. Yeah. Everybody can see that. So I'm just going to go back and we're just going to start from the center and I'm going to explain each ring. Okay. Okay. So in the central disc, this is the grand master template. So I also included all of Don's MEM Gong Yoga exercises as well. So in the center, we have the, the, um, oh, the first, uh, first two exercises for the um, governing vessels. But for most gardens built in nature, we start with the cardinal directions, north, south, east, west. The next ring would be the 12 Western astrological signs. I just want to interject one thing in there. The reason why we do that, of course, is that uh, spiritually, they say, esoterically, a day is equal to a year. So um, the idea is the outside ring there she's talking about is the 24 hour day. And then the astrological part over here, that's for the year. So you, you can look at either a day or you can look at a year. Right. And you'll see that ring in a minute. All right. Sorry. So the next ring, and, and as we expand and move out from the center, you'll notice that each system so there's four major astrological systems. We have the Western astrology. We have the Nordic runes. So we start with 12. And then we have 24 Nordic runes. Whoops. OK. Then there was the 27 uh, Vedic nakshastras. Top left, we have the 64 Chinese I Ching. The next ring is the American Indian moons. Then we have the Western astrology on the top right again. Bottom right is 365, it's the 360 degrees and those are the Sabian symbols. 
And then on the far left, we have on the bottom, we have the 12 Chinese meridians in time. And so we've also included on this all the exercises from Don's MEM yoga uh, practice so that, well, I'll in the next one, I'll explain when you can use those. Yeah, so this is the large template. And if you start from the center, you do a straight track divination. So what we said before, go to the outside wall and find today's date. So today's date is the 11th. So look at Southeast on the, okay, everybody there? Yeah, yeah. It's between, it's Willow. Look at Willow and then East, Southeast. So you draw a straight line from there into the center of the circle. Mm -hmm. And then we start walking across each ring. Mm -hmm. And as we do so, we refer to our handy garden reference guide, which you'll get if you take the workshop. And you walk in and you'll, you'll come to the Sabian symbol. So you read about that for that particular date. Then you'll notice your Chinese um, meridian, your horoscope, your American Indian moon. You'd refer to your I Ching, your Nakshastra, your rune, your Western horoscope, and then you're in the center. And what you'll find, like we haven't, it was a lot of work putting this puppy together. So we don't go into great detail on each of those signs and symbols. So we encourage people to maybe buy another reference, but you'll find that there's similarities between each of those systems. And then you can look at um, your birth time and you can do the same thing for your time. And that's how you can do a personal divination. Um, if you did it for today's date, it might give you inspiration for let's say um, a meditation or if you wanted an intention for your gong or your, your gathering. Um, but it gives you ideas and inspiration, yeah? Does anybody have any questions so far? Because it's a huge amount of information. Um, yeah, th there are a few questions okay. um, that, that people have dropped in. Um, somebody said, um, can you do this in a communi community garden or with a group or like a miniature version, um, you know, somewhere? Definitely. Uh, it shrinks that kind of sizable. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you... Um... <laughs> The, the pattern that's in front of you, uh, we actually print it on 1.5 meter square pieces of fabric, which is easy, folds, folds into a little Ziploc bag. And you can use that as, um, let's say an altar or as a central disc. And you can then gather around it if you don't have, uh, let's say the resources to actually build one in nature but certainly it can be any size. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. And, yeah. Anybody else in the group got a question? Um, if you just let me know, I can, I can pop you in and you can ask Martha now while we're online. I'm trying to scroll through people to see. Um, no, I can't see anyone's hand up, Martha. Right. They're so overwhelmed with information. <laughs> I, 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 it is a lot of information. It's dense, yeah. but it's, it's ridiculously interesting. So, Well, it was fun creating this with a piece of dental floss, let me tell you. Um, but oh, anyway. Just a question here from Jen. Uh, is it built just out of rocks or do you, do you involve trees as well? Do you plant trees around the perimeter where it says oak, birch, ash, holly? Okay, well... You can do whatever you wish, mm -hmm. all right? And you can customize it and tailor it. Um, you just have to remember that if you put trees, and these trees relate to the runes, by the way, 
Um, you, if you put trees next to your garden, just make sure they're far enough away so that they don't cast their shadows when you're trying to be accurate for the solstices and other events. Mm -hmm. But by all means, I mean, in Croatia, they had a, a plan for um, planting herbs. Wasn't that right, Don, and lavender and different flowers? Um, yeah, and I think um, I have a pattern where the outside ring is actually different flowering trees so that each month in succession, the trees would bloom, which is no, quite special. So many places in the world, these trees won't grow. So um, what we do is we take a piece of the tree, let's say a, a piece of elm bark, a pine, that, and what we do is we embed them into a stone. So we take a piece of the tree that won't grow in that area, and we take a piece and put it in the rock to take the powers of that particular tree and involve those powers with the garden. Yeah. And, uh, and I think, you know, the other thing is you can, you know, we talked about people bringing something from their home. Like I, I would take Chinese coins and we'd take a hair and we'd tie it up and plant it in the garden. But you can take these pieces of wood, you can add crystals to it. Um, you can really enhance the energetic capacity and power of the garden using any tool at your discretion. Yeah. So important. So much originality could go into your garden that once you just understand the sort of inner mechanism of the garden, that we have taken the different calendar systems from all over the world that are separate and divide us on this planet and have found the ones that are lock and key that go together, combined all of these calendars into one garden. And what you find out is that every calendar system in the world, around the world, is a divination system. Now, why is that? Why is that every calendar is to divine? Mm. So that therefore, as you go into the garden, we call them straight tracks, that you could go in and as you cross each of the different calendar system, divination systems, if you like, you can open up your garden guidebook that she has made for everybody so that you could do an I Ching and then you could do a Run. And by the time you get to the center of the garden, that perhaps you will learn a little more about yourself. Mm. And, and, and like Martha said there, Martha, you encourage people to buy a book of uh, I Ching so you can delve deeper because obviously there's much mm. more information in there or on the room yeah, system. I, I mean, you know, the, um, the garden guidebook, I've actually put it in, in this, but it, it's pretty extensive and, mm. whoops, you know, it's, it's pretty thorough, <laughs> you know, for each of the Vedic, uh, whoops, for each of the Vedic symbols, you have a full page of information, correspondences, etc. And Don is extremely good at proofreading, by the way. Um, and yeah, oh, it's, it's not expensive, but it's very extensive. So it is a question it's, of the book itself is, is you know, it's like all these books combined together so you don't have to go out shopping for a rune book and a this book and a that book and you actually can get by with the garden guidebook okay yeah yeah i think what we've tried to do is give people enough information to understand the correspondences um, and if they want to delve deeper, they could certainly get Dane Rudiar's book or, or, you know, they can get the book on I Ching or, or whatever. But certainly the garden guide is more than enough to get you started. And it's even, it's small enough. It's only about 60 pages. So the idea we had was uh, people could laminate it so you could take it out and, in the garden in any weather. For you gongers, it's a one gong inside of another gong inside of another gong. So yeah, that yeah. each one of those little gongs inside of a gong um, are tuned differently so that you can um, 
play your gong there. And uh, it's mainly to bring your gongs and to gong for these uh, celebrations of uh, evoking the coming day of world peace with uh, Dr. Muller, that that would come when everybody would get together gardens all over the world, hold hands, give thanks for life and breath, and listen to all the gongs and bells ring again around the planet. So these are sort of like ground zero for each of those spots around the world. Mm. Very much so. And, and if, if you want to, um, you know, if you look on the outside ring of the garden where all the, the trees are, um, you have gates. So each of the cardinal directions should be a double gate. And the idea was to have two posts or I guess two posts with a crossbar. And that's where you'd hang the outside circle of gongs. And you'd have benches all around the outside of the, um, the garden so that people could gather and meet and you drum jams, whatever, meditations. And uh, it's also a way of containing the energy inside the, cir the, the circle itself. Those benches around the circle, like the wall of the world uh, benches, well, actually they're dolmens. Like in the ancient days, they would have two stones sticking up in a long slab over them, like a park bench. They're called mm -hmm. dolmens. They're usually like in, Star in Stonehenge, they're very, very big for giants. But uh, in your garden, you can make small uh, small ones for people to sit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I think that, that sorry. No. I think that's one of the challenges that people have if they want to make it in nature. Um, I have, I think the next slide is a list of all the existing, whoops, uh, New Jerusalem. Do you want to talk about that, Don? The, the New Jerusalem. Yes, this is an ancient, ancient symbol which I borrowed, and simply what it is, it's the major uh, gong field, which is in the center, and then there are 12 astrological signs around it. Uh, it's called the New Jerusalem uh, diagram, very ancient. Uh, and so all the little star fields are the little individual gardens that all have something similar in common with. So actually what we're creating here is our own star field on earth and it depends upon where the lights or the stars are on the planet so those are the little star fields and there are 12 of them and um, so it's very interesting to be able to see how we can create our own star field just from uh, taking distance and translating it into music yeah and and that's sort of advanced garden Okay, I can see your face, Bob. Yeah, so, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's, that's the next, we do that on day two, okay? <laughs> but I think I have, a, oh, this is a, an example. I, I don't have a lot of pictures, but this is a beautiful garden that was made in Greece. And on the other side of the water to the left is actually Delphi. And uh, this is the only, I, unfortunately, the other pictures came in just before the conference call tonight, but it's actually finished. And I think it's one of the more beautiful ones and it, it's solid. I mean, he dug it out of the side of the hill. You were there for the consecration, weren't you, Don? Yes, yes, yes. And yeah. uh, uh, they're still improving it and making it better and better and better. It's called a goddess garden. You can't see, oh yes, you can see on the top of the picture there, you can see this is the sleeping goddess uh, that's over on the upper upper oh, right. Oh, upper right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. That's named after that. Got it. But it's very beautiful, and they and they so they leveled the ground and they tiled it, didn't they? And then they painted it, and uh, it's beautifully done. But one of the challenges of building these in nature is if it's on private land, you have to make sure it's going to be uh, maintained over over the years because I believe it was the first one that uh, in Australia, right, that was sold and the garden was, was dug up. 
hopefully in the future that we'll have our goddess ceremonies there in this particular goddess garden. It's a very expensive one. My, they spent believe how much money they spent trying to make here on the par of all the other ancient Greek uh, monuments of Greece. Wow. One day I'll get there, Don. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I hope that uh, people yep. who are watching will invite her. I can't do too much traveling now, but the, if she could come and help you build a garden on your land, that would be wonderful. And it just so happens my daughter's a landscape architect, too, so that's handy, too. <laughs> Complete coincidence, by the way. This is the, a list of the existing gardens. And as you can see, um, there aren't that many. And we want to make this list bigger, all right? Um, but uh, Tom was very active in Poland, obviously Aiden in England. Um, and I th if I'm not mistaken, all of these gardens um, are in existence, except for the one in Verona and in Naples. I believe the Verona one was on public land, and they were given the land, but it's just the expense, yeah? It's got a problem. So how do we overcome it? We can't build these gardens everywhere because of the politics, and it's very frustrating. So all of these are like, oh, mm, this one, there one, but it, it's difficult. So we created the portable ones so that you can have a garden anywhere you go. So now if we can't fulfill and have a real mm -hmm, garden anywhere, we still can manage to uh, fulfill the hookup of to have a, a world peace garden in every country of the world. And by the way, you know, people do have peace gardens all over the world already. So all you got to do is to rename it as a world peace garden. And uh, that becomes our network around the world. We just, some of these peace gardens are not connected. Mm. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, that's the idea of the peace poles. You could include those in the gardens as well. And I think somebody mentioned, uh, you know, there was a question about, uh, adding, let's say, the Chinese astrological system or the Mayan astrological system. And, and f I mean, you could, you could add more rings, no problem. The only problem with those two systems is that they change every year. So you would have to use wooden stakes or something like that. And once a year, you'd have to readjust given the moons, etc. So the, the pattern that Dawn created is static regardless of the time, the year, etc. Okay, so it's in timeless. Shed, in the shed near the garden, we have all of those movable things. So we just bring them out and if, reset them. For instance, if you were going to take your astrological chart, which is number one, I guess, for you, is you take all the planets and you overlay them in the garden and then where your planets do a straight track from, let's say, where your moon or Mars or Mercury is, cross all these divination systems, and you could do a divination from each of the planets that are in your natal chart. So it has such a wide variety of different possibilities to develop your divine mind, and we call it the Buddha mind of intuition. This is why the gardens are there. Another reason for them being there is to be able to develop the new guru angel point, which is a little higher in the third eye, so people can learn all of these things um, that were lost many years ago. Hmm. Lovely. Have you got many more slides, Martha? Uh, no. No. Okay, cool. No. So what uh, I'd like to do at this point, if that's okay with you guys, is open... now on that slide. This was the first one at Gaunt's house. It's still ah. people go there all the time now, and that's um, when we was you know, the first gathering there. See okay. how we got signs of where everybody lived around the garden. So when you walked into the garden. You have to put where you're from, so you have a straight track from the garden 
to where you live. Oh, I can see that now. Awesome. Okay, Bob, you had a question or? Yeah, I was just going to say maybe we could try opening the floor up. Um, sure. Two questions. So um, let's see if we can manage this between us. If we unmute everybody, let's see if we can somehow allow people to come in and ask questions. And I'll try and facilitate that. Is that does okay. anyone have a question for Martha or Don? Uh, you can raise your hand and we'll unmute you. Anybody? Yeah, Jean. I've, I've, hang on, Jean. We haven't unmuted you yet. There you go. Hi, Jean. Hi. Uh, I have a question. Since Martha is from Hong Kong, I just wonder how come I didn't see any garden in Asia? <laughs> well, it's a small problem of land. Um, but funny you should say that. I'm sitting on my labyrinth in my studio, and uh, it will probably be the first one in Asia on the 21st floor of a building. Uh, since I already have the circles painted on my floor, the next step is to paint the symbols. And I'll be doing that in the next couple months. Wow. Cool. Yeah. And I do think that Tibetan play, I mean, there should be a garden in Tibet. Yeah. Well, yeah, make it happen. Make it yeah. happen, you know. Yeah. It's uh it's just, it all it starts with an idea and it will grow. It'll snowball. But you know, the first in in China and and around Asia, it the first concern obviously is land. And uh it doesn't have to be big. The one in Greece isn't that big. It's what 30 feet across. The one that they were uh, in Croatia was 80 feet, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it can be as big as or as small as you'd like. So the one in my studio will be 28 feet across. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. So fi find a space and we'll make it. Yeah. Thank you, Jean. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I know here in Los Angeles, we don't have one yet, which is unheard of. Um, and I was actually brainstorming and I was thinking, you know, we have these beautiful communal spaces that are related to the cities and buildings when they are being constructed, they have a certain amount of money allocated to art. And so it'll be a sculpture, it'll be some kind of installation piece. So part of me was wondering if we just reframe it a little bit to be a modern art installation piece that also energetically um, raises the vibration of the planet, um, but kind of putting it out there. So like what she was saying with, why isn't there one in, in China or in Hong Kong? Um, if we start to look at maybe approaching corporations for sponsorship, then it can then be put out there on public land because it is a pity that they are on you know, it's a person or private land, that's fantastic, but we really want places where communities can gather. So I was just kind of thinking in my head, like, how do we start to maybe shift our perspective? Because if a corporation is anyway going to spend 100000 or 200000 in our case, U.S. dollars, for an art installation piece, why not invest it in a, in a peace bell garden? That was just my idea. Ooh. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it is an interactive piece of art, there's no doubt. And they can be very beautiful. Um, and I think, Don, your original idea was to have one in Washington, D.C. with this massive <laughs> sculpture in the center. And yeah, yeah. They, 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 I never got to the people to, with it exactly. But we did uh, submit one and we didn't win the contest, of course. And the garden was never really built. It was at Haynes Point. They, Haynes Point was a garden where they have like hands sticking up out of the ground or a foot like that. And people was very weird, still there. And they were going to take this down and put in a new world peace garden there. And so everybody submitted their designs, including mine. Uh, but it was got, but they didn't raise enough money to actually ever go ahead and do it. So it would have been fine to have a garden there with directionals of all the other 
united nations around the world so that all the stars in the garden would be specific for that particular thing of connecting all of the NGO places around the world. But at that time, I don't think they, they were quite ready for that. Mm. Don't Shame, know. because they could really use it. <laughs> yeah, well, but who knows? Uh, we'll see what happens in the future. But it does uh, satisfy a lot of things that are necessary for the children. Children wouldn't go for all of these different uh, divination things at all. But that's a hidden element as well. On top of it is just the beauty of the different... Um, flowers and everything that you plant in the garden and the directional you know if you can think of a big sign that goes up with the pointing directions all over the world like they did in australia that's wonderful for the children because children are always at the center of the universe so they stand in there and they see the directions of the world uh in the garden so that's on one level that makes it uh uh, good for the education of the children. The other levels are for people who are working with divination. Mm. Yeah. Well, I was looking there and thinking, you said you could add to it your own kind of ideas. It'd be lovely to have something that you spoke out loud, like a mantra or an affirmation in different areas that you've got to speak yeah. out. And you can do the Ching stones or walking stones so that if you do uh, each, you do a Tai Chi, you can do them on the walking stones around the garden. So the gardens are being used for other disciplines as well because it's mm. universal. Mm. It's lovely. Um, yeah. Yell. Um, I just wanted to say, I remember when I, um, years ago in 2003, uh, where we actually see those, that picture that Martha still ha is sharing, um, we were talking about all the different events and occasions that you would do a gong. And it was kind of like, okay, we knew about uh, doing it at the end of a Kundalini class. We knew about using it. And then in the last 17 years, exponentially, the um, manifestation of huge sound healing events, hundreds of gong players. Um, so I feel like with the Starhenge, like Bob said, it's always been kind of on the back burner as the last thing that the gong player does. Um, but it's not so far fetched when I think about it, that in if everyone kind of gets sparkled by this and gets inspired by this, incorporating it incorporating it into their um gong mission that in 15 years just like now there's literally like gong players sharing the gong all over the globe which wasn't happening 17 years ago um that the same thing could be happening with um these kind of really fantastic energetic um vortexes and like points as well so it's not that far-fetched to think that in 15 years i don't know don keep taking your vitamins so you'll hopefully you'll be here till 120. this was in the turn of the 21st century where we inaugurated that garden in, in 1999 2000 and look at you you see yourself in the garden yeah i look so young you I, look, <laughs> I look so young there it's been 20 years later I, I lost that jacket. But look, there are some other people there from China. There's some other people in the garden still today that they are playing gongs. Amazing. Uh, oh, it's so nice. I was just looking at the picture. Mm. Martha, I remember that. Um, possibly, is it time for Martha to either move ahead on this slides and stop yeah. sharing your screen because yeah. we're already past time at 732 yeah. so yeah. just every garden has this dedication would you like to read it don since you wrote it you wrote it you read it you wrote it a world without war Woohoo! 
for our children of the future. Otherwise, you know that with the way that we're going now with the reptilian <laughs> minds of, of this world, uh, it looks bad. But if we can gong people and awaken the guru angel in their prefrontal cortex, that means that war will become obsolete. Like for all the gong players in the world, you know, when we gong together, we are one in many bodies. So th there's something going on here that uh, that's very important. Uh, so th those were the dedications for every garden. Right, and and so I think the last thing is is how you can get involved. So I don't know if everybody gets this. I just watched The Matrix recently. So you can either take the red pill or the blue pill. And I want everybody to take the pill that's going to get them to learn more about the gardens. Because this, as, you know, as students of Dawn, I believe it's, it's our, our hookum to carry his legacy forward. And the gardens have always been very close to his heart. And we've only got 15 of them. And like, what is wrong with this picture? We have to get making these gardens. And uh, so very soon, you'll be able to take an online workshop on the garden um, with the online Gong Master training program. Uh, it's already written, and uh, we're going to be putting that live very soon. Um, you can organize a workshop a face-to-face -face workshop with Don or myself, um, and it's usually two days in duration. You can build a garden, and for instance, the one in uh, Greece, um, I advised, Don advised on it remotely. They built it, and then Don was there for the consecration, so we don't actually have to be there. Um, although on other times, uh, it's usually, what, a five-day workshop or so to build a garden. Oh, it's great. What a wonderful thing to do is to actually get your hands in the ground and to build a garden together, knowing what its power is. This is the reward. To know yeah. that you are attaching heaven to earth, like in Tai Lui on the Gong or Tai Lai, and bringing heaven and earth together. Yeah. So if, if you'd like further information, just, yeah, you can email me and I'll field the responses or the inquiries, and then I'll collaborate with Don, and uh, we'll see if we can uh, put a few more gardens on the map. Amazing. Thank you, Martha. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you, Don. Um, just before we go, Martha, someone, Jen, has just said, when you um, finish your star hinge on your floor there, can you, put it, can you post a picture? On the group oh, of course. on Facebook so everyone can of see. Of course. It. It's going to take a little while. It's, uh, it's a lot of little pictures to draw. But um, I'm just getting the stencils organized. And my son's just returned, and he's an animator. So I've got extra manpower now. But yeah. definitely, definitely share it. And you're more than welcome to come to Hong Kong and yeah. do a divination here. Yeah. And we're going to bring you over here as well, Martha, to do a workshop. So. <laughs> Sounds New good. York. Yeah. Um, I know everybody would love to hear your gong a little bit because it's a fascinating gong and it's made of titanium. Do you have a mallet there? Yeah, lots of mallets. How do I get the sound to you? Because right now I've got my headphones on. Do I just I take know. unplug this? I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe just stand near it and play it a little bit. It'll probably come uh, through the microphone on your headphones <laughs> if you can. <laughs> we'll give it a try. Just a Hold little on. bit. Just a test. Okay. Well, this is Ooh. this is uh, Age of Aquarius. She's uh, forty-seven and a half inches across, and she weighs twenty-seven pounds. Can you hear that? Yeah. Okay. We're in business.
We're not getting the bottom end, but we can hear something which sounds really lovely. <laughs> We're just not getting the bass because um, the frequency is so low um, to bring through, but it sounds lovely and it's nice to get close up to it as well because it looks incredible. Yeah, it's it's uh, pretty special. Um, mm. I don't quite know how he made it. He, um, it took him a whole month. And uh, just to give you an idea, 22 inch uh, titanium gong takes uh, 22,000 hits of the hammer. And this one is 48. So you can just imagine how long it took. And uh, as I said, she was premiered at the Global Wellness Summit and she was in New York in January. And uh, I'm supposed to come to New York again in August. If I do, I'll see if I can bring her. Um, fits on an airplane, believe it or not, uh, as excess luggage. Um, but uh, <laughs> I've lost everybody. I've lost Martha. Uh, no, no, I. Can't. You're back. Okay. Are we good? It's already, I'm just going to get, I'm being okay. the timekeeper today. It's yep, already 7.40. So okay. I don't know. I'm with you. I'm with you. We just, we're like kids in a candy shop, aren't we? Okay. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Don. It was a wonderful um, My pleasure. presentation. Someone just said, boo, time oh. is an illusion. <laughs> What's the next one, uh, yeah, El, we're going to do? Who's on next? Uh, oh, next Thursday. Uh, coming up in two days, we're going to have Sotantar, who is um, also a gong master in Orange County. Um, and he's got um, a great, he's going to be talking about cymatics and gong, gong fu rather than kung fu. Um, and so that should be fun. And so that's going to be next, this Thursday in two days. So it'll be fun. Okay. Same time, y'all. Same time, same place. Same time, and same any place. comments that people might have, what do they do? Just send them to Yael. No? Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, if it's about the sound quality, just don't send it. I'm fully aware. <laughs> okay. So, um, cool. Thank you, everybody. Um, can what we, are you, uh, Bob, yeah. are you doing something after this? Are you... At some point, no. I'm, uh, I believe I am. You mean about, yeah, you're about musical presentations you've been doing? Yeah. 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 Well, I think at some point I'm going to talk about some things. Yeah, right. I think so masks and theater of the soul and stuff i think don was talking about on tuesdays don't you do a tea and talk oh, that's oh, oh yeah after this straight after this i'm doing a thing called tea and talk not today, though. Not today. oh we're not doing it today this today's the first day we haven't done it but we do gong baths every week as well don't we yeah every i think it's every sunday online could we do a collective ohm and then you can go do your tea and talk and I will we'll open up the mute so people can just schmooze a little bit? Okay, let's do that. Let's do some nice ohms together to close us out. Mm. Nice deep breath in. Oh. Shanti, 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 Shanti,
Peace, 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 everybody. Have a wonderful day or night. Thank you, Thank you Bob. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. So we're going to leave the room open for a little bit so people can chat.